the, the program, as you might notice, is, gets a bit loose from here on, but um, it's, so it's going to be uh, slightly demand driven. Anthony has got a couple more things uh, that, to round off some of the, I think, answer a few questions that, that, that you've had. So, um, for about 15 minutes or something. Maybe 10. Maybe 10. And we're timing all these people who say they're going to be one minute and five minutes, right? Let me try and make them go wrong. Um, so, uh, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, we've, we'll have a chance for another sort of breakout group, which means we can go upstairs where it's not so cold. Someone asked me about the, the, the temperature in this room is controlled by a computer. And you know how feedback, bad feedback, is a part of a bad interface? The feedback cycle for getting the temperature in here changed is about a week. Um, and the only feedback you get is that the temperature has changed. There's no number or acknowledgement or anything. We write a letter and uh, it might change a week later. So, uh, <coughs> so come back next week. Yeah. Um, but the easier solution, we'll vote with our feet and go upstairs in a minute, probably. Uh, and oh, we've got um, Paul Matthews was down this afternoon um, to speak. Sadly, he's attending his father-in-law's funeral today, so he won't be able to make it. Um, and uh, but, but he, uh, he was a member of the panel that actually kicked off all these new standards and uh, the New Zealand Computer Society have been very active behind that. Thankfully we, we got to see a lot of the New Zealand Computer Society last night, so uh, they have been well represented. But amongst other things, they're the people who are cutting the checks for the people who are getting reimbursements. So um, we'll, you'll, you'll hear more from them if you've come from out of town and you're getting a, a subsidy. Um, Incidentally, Simon tells me absolutely everyone who registered has turned up, which is pretty impressive actually. Mm. You expect one or two people to get lost along the way, so that's, that's very cool. Um, on that note, I'll hand you over and I'm going to go and give you some handouts. That, uh, that we'll You've already heard quite a bit from me yesterday, so I'll try not to spend too long. But a question came up yesterday that deserved a proper answer, so uh, I spent too long last night trying to work out a proper answer. Um, this talk is going back to the microscope. We've just been looking through the astronomical telescope, the world of programming, and now we're going back into the microscope down to some level one standards. And the question came up in the programming standards 145 and 146, with this achieved step up says, well, merit, uh, beg your pardon, that should be uh, merit, that's a typo on the handout. Um, the achieved is that you're using some kind of procedural structure and actions and conditions. The merit step up is that you're using a procedural structure with well chosen uh, actions, conditions, and control structures. And the excellent step up is an effective procedural structure that constitutes a well structured logical solution to the task. And the question was that Max that was asking what's the difference between well chosen actions and conditions and this um, well structured logical solution. And the answer is. What we really wanted to say at excellence was that the code is efficient. But we can't say that because we're defining efficiency. And NZQA won't let you define efficiency in terms of efficiency, so this language of well-structured logical solution has been used. So the task, the handout is... Is, uh, is there a handout? There is, and it's coming, and it's got this off. Okay. Um, this, this is it, except it says achieved instead of narrow. Yeah. Um, so the task is, and it came up earlier, you said you're using it at school, to bring a checkerboard. There it is, a checkerboard of size M. Uh, and that checkerboard might be black and white squares in a game, or red and green squares in a game, or something graphical. Uh, but I've simplified it down to just a, a pattern of cross and zero, because you know, that's a, a perfectly acceptable checkerboard. So my output is, my task is to print a checkerboard of size M, and just to keep things simple, I'm not going to read and, and uh, test the input, I'm just going to say M is 6. And we're going to look at three different solutions. Here is, here is working code that generates the checker tool. Uh, we'll run it. <coughs> there it is, generated the checkerboard. I would put it to you that this is achieved level code because there is so much that is wrong and horrible and ugly about it. Tell me some of the things that are wrong and horrible and ugly about that code. Yep. Even row two, one row, both two legs and one leg. Absolutely. Yep. Giving all the examples of even and odd numbers, that's awful. It only goes up to nine. What happens if n is 12? What else is wrong with it? Two if statements rather than if else. Two ifs rather than if else. Yep. 
What about the loops? Am I using the right loops? Four loops. Four loops would have been better. I don't have to have a separate variable that I'm updating. This is, this is ugly, ugly, ugly. But it works and it generates the right output you just saw it run. So to me this would be a cheap solution. Did the job. I can see multiple things about it that are not well chosen. Let's get rid of it. Looks like a hardware engineer wrote Sorry? It looks like a hardware engineer wrote it. It looks like a hardware engineer wrote it or a first year student in my course because they take everything very literally. Boolean variables can be true or false. I'll set one for Here is a slightly better version. This might be an achievable uh, version. And 5 instead of F5, uh, and it prints a checkerboard. There's a lot less wrong with it. I would put it to you that although it's not a great solution, at least now the loops are well chosen. We don't have the multiple overuse of the uh, Boolean flags. We're working out whether a number is even or odd in a much more sensible way. If a number divides by 2 with a remainder equal to 0, then it's an even number. And if its remainder is not equal to zero, then it's an odd number. So I don't have to list my odd and even numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine. I can just do that one calculation, tell me it's even or odd. I'm still using Boolean flags to set whether a row is true uh, or if it's false, it's an odd row. And an even column, false if it's true, it's an even row. And I'm still trying to find the right combination of these odd and even conditions to work out whether I should print a cross or a circle. If you haven't seen this in Python before, end equals blank, that just says print the next thing on the same line. So I'm going to put ink, x's and zeros on the same line, and then at the end of the line, at the end of the row, the print statement says move on to the next row. So that creates the multiple rows now. This is a better solution. This works all right. Uh, as I said, you just saw it run. I would give this uh, merit because the, the structures and the conditions have been well chosen. But we can do better. Uh, we can do better with an insight. Here are my column numbers, one, two, three, four. I'll just use a few of them. Here are my row numbers, one, two, three, four. Here I'm going to add them up. One and one is two, three, four, five. Two and one is three, four, five, six. 3 and 1 is 4, 5, 6, 7. 4 and 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8. Where's the checkerboard? Odd and even. Odd and even. Excellent level solution. If the sum of the row and columns is even, you're going to print something. And if it's not even, you're going to print something else. That's it. And it runs. And it prints a checkerboard. That's an excellent solution because it's a well structured, efficient solution to the task. Uh, maybe you can get better than this. I don't know. I'm not good enough programming to get better than that myself. But I can't see a way that that can be improved. And if you can't see a way that it can be improved, it's excellent. So I hope that answers your question by way of an example. It may be a kind of extreme example, but that's the sort of progression I'm looking for. I put it in crude, very non-ministry approved language at the bottom of the first page of this handout. Achieve that it works, here if it works and there's nothing obviously bad about it. And excellence if it's efficient, compact, a logical solution. Question, yes. Can you go back to the excellence example? I certainly can. Some very new to Python. Can you show me which line? I think it's the row plus column set 2 equals 0. Is that saying that it based sum to an even number? That's correct. That's exactly that same thing? Well, row plus column will be this thing here. Row plus column, maybe 3. Yep. If 3 divides by 2 with remainder equals 0. Plus the percentage design. Yep. Percentage yeah. of modulo division. Please, yeah. What this shows is quite clearly then, isn't it, that you can't give a student a plan that is going to come out with an achieved or a I do not see program. how it can be done. I don't either. So the standards now is change sufficiently enough that we're going to have to do them. I would highly recommend that you do them together. I do not myself yeah. see how it can be done. And that's, looking at this, the plan is so different yeah. for each one. The plan is so different. <coughs>
Can you put up the uh, achieved example again? The very top one. Right up the very top. There's the achieved example of all its glory. Very mechanical, very explicit. Easier than the two with procedures, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's it's much easier to tell if something's been decomposed with the logical modules. Yeah. But here the, the decomposition is at the level of the control structures. And you'd be looking for the same thing at level two as well. Awesome. At level one, that's all you've got to read with on this progression for Some of the rows and columns forms are not even checkable pattern. We exploit this by doing modulus arithmetic to determine whether to bring across or zero at any given position. And then I might have uh, a comment on the print that says use first point and bring it onto a new line or, or something like that. But the, the point about the excellence comments is that they don't just document what you did, they document why you did it and what the alternatives would have been. Yep. This is the excellence example, you know, not more than just the fact that he's got a better algorithm for solving the problem? In, in the end, yes. So also, I mean, this is not just the worst algorithm, this is actually kind of an abuse of, of code. It actually physically <laughs> hurt me right at this point. <laughs> um, so, so if they're both at the same well, algorithm to start right. with and have the same algorithm. Oh, no, they wouldn't. They, you, the same algorithm doesn't get you to these two different right. solutions. These are different algorithms. Yeah. To me, it's hard to separate the algorithm. In the past, that would have been excellent to have multiple logical yes. you know, yes. and had nested loops. It yes. would have been perfect. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, well, exactly. They would have had to show nested loops on the yes. show multiple logical Well, as I said, the, next, the, the current draft of the study tries to deal with these issues and look yeah. at what actually is better code yeah. as we write it, not. Not a lot. Not a lot. Anything else? Anything else? Those just the statements that yeah. 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 everybody to change their handouts so yeah, sorry. So, no. the and put so the achieved there should be merit. I didn't bother lifting the achieved phrasing. It was the, the step up between merit and excellence that caused the issue. Well chosen versus well structured logical solution. That's what I'm trying to illustrate. Well structured logical solution. The excellence criteria won't actually look like running fast as well. It probably was because it's not doing as much churn of you know, useless stuff. That's not a criteria anywhere in the standards. We don't ask if we need to measure the efficiency of run time of the code or, some, or whatever, but it is certainly something to look out for. Bad solutions do too much work, good solutions do just the right amount of work. Yeah. 